let's try using this in a sentence to see what I mean. Okay, so Mary and John wanted to go to their favorite restaurant. The problem is that it would take two hours driving to arrive at their favorite restaurant. Okay, that's pretty far, a pretty long way to go just to go to your favorite restaurant. The thing is, they didn't care. It, did, it didn't matter to them that it was very far. That was not important. They just wanted to go to their favorite restaurant. This is a situation where we can use despite, but we have one problem. Despite is a preposition, and after a preposition, you can only use a noun. You can't put a sentence. The restaurant is far away is a sentence. And we need a noun after despite. You can't say despite the restaurant is far away. You can't put a sentence after a preposition. You have to use a noun. So we have to fix this problem. What is the, so our sentence is the restaurant is far away. What is the verb in that sentence? The restaurant is far away. Is. How do you make is, how do you make the verb to be into a noun? What is the noun form of the verb to be? It's being, being, being. So being far away is the noun form of is far away. We can say, despite being far away, despite being far away, Oh, uh, now let me find my, my problem here. Okay, so despite being far away, uh, they went to their favorite restaurant. Despite being far away, they went to their favorite restaurant. That means it doesn't matter it was far away. They didn't care about that. That was not important. They went to their favorite restaurant anyway. That's how you use despite. Doesn't matter it was far away. Who cares it was far away? They went to their favorite restaurant. Despite being far away, they went to their favorite restaurant. Let's try another example using despite. Here is another situation. Lisa worked very hard all week. And by Friday, she was very tired. But her friends invited her to a fun day downtown on Saturday. Okay, now we want to say she didn't care she was very tired. It didn't matter to her that she was very tired. It was more important to go with her friends. But we have a problem because if we want to use despite for this, we can't use a sentence. We can't say despite she was tired. It doesn't work. So we have, to, we have to change this into a noun. What is the noun form of the verb to be? Being. We can say, despite being tired. That means, oh, it doesn't matter she was tired. She didn't care about that. She wanted to spend time with her friends. Despite being tired, she went downtown with her friends on Saturday. Who cares? She didn't care she was tired. She wanted to spend time with her friends. Despite being tired, she went downtown with her friends on Saturday. But now let's take a look and see how it was used in the paragraph. Despite his fear, Kevin resumed digging. Okay, so what that means is he was afraid, but he didn't care. He, he continued to dig because, remember, he saw the skull. Oh, no, a skull. And he was very afraid. But despite being afraid, despite his fear, he continued to dig. It didn't matter he was afraid. He didn't care. He continued to dig. All right. So let's see. Uh... All right, let's continue. A averting his eyes from the heap, from the heap of human bones, 
that had accompanied the treasure, Kevin packed the silver into the sack that he brought along. Then, dragging its weight behind him, he started the long climb up. It was close to dusk when Kevin stepped out onto the grounds. Long shadows were playing across the neglected shrubbery, and he stumbled as he made his way back to the path. So he managed to, to leave the well, exit the well. He had his treasure with him. And he was walking away from the rectory. He was going back, maybe, to the train station. Kevin Clyde had... Oh, wait, let me get rid of this. Whoops. 